Decorating. You're going to find it at West Side Decorating Center. Good morning to you. On this Friday morning, I'm Art Lewis. Nice to have you with us. Later on, after the 10 o'clock news, we're going to talk about the Can Council with Heather from the Can Council. At 11 o'clock, uh, the Veterans Pantry at the Saginaw YMCA will be the subject of focus. But we're going to talk a little sports this hour. Now, we're going to talk a lot of sports this hour with a guy who has been involved in sports ever since I've known him and long before that. And we say good morning to who also happens to be the vice chair of the Saginaw County Commission. He is Jack Taney. Jack, good morning to you. Good morning, Art. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. I don't know that there's been a day in your life you haven't been in sports. I've been heavily, heavily involved. <laughs> <laughs> what what started that? I mean, you know, at what age can you remember yourself really saying, you know, sports is where it's at? You know what? It's it's kind of a funny story. I grew up right down the street in Zawaki, just literally miles from uh, uh, where we're at right now, and um, went out for a little league team. And uh, back then it was different. They only had a set number of uniforms. And uh, coach did it different. He took all the players out by shortstop. He was at home plate, and he hit them a hot smash. If you caught the hot smash, you were on the team. <laughs> if you didn't, you, you weren't were. on the team. I'm left-handed. I get out there, hit me a hot spa- smash. I did not catch it. Oops. So they only had shirts and hats for, you know, 10, 11 kids. I had to go home, didn't make the Little League team. I went home, and uh, I was devastated, talked to my parents, and uh, my dad says, well, you have to engulf yourself in something that you believe in. And uh, I ended up playing a lot of sports throughout my life, uh, football, basketball, baseball, uh, did some swimming, tennis. But um, that, you know, that <laughs> at a young age, for that to happen, um, that's how I got started. But, you know, that's probably one of the best lessons in sports you can learn. You don't always win. You don't always make the team. And the way you do make the team is to work hard and learn the, learn the craft. Exactly. Uh, it's a little different nowadays. Everybody gets uniforms. Uh, yeah, it's too different, I'm afraid. Every, everybody gets partici- participation trophies. Take to succeed in some ways. You know, exactly. That, that's, yeah. I don't believe in participation trophies. Exactly. What are you teaching them? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, because life is full of ups and downs. And sports is a great teacher of the downs. Boy, it sure is. <laughs> so, so did you ever make the team? Uh, yes. Yep. The very next year I made the team. Um, and I played sports all throughout my life. And, um, you know, after college I played sports. Um, but uh, I found my knack was uh, sports writing and um after high school, I was at Delta College. I started out in law enforcement. My dad was a city manager. He knew the sheriff. He says, hey, I can get you a job on a sheriff's department. Mm-hmm. And I uh, went two years of classes, and I figured, oh, I might have to end up arresting my buddy. <laughs> I said, that's not going to work out too well. So I had a professor out there who said, you have a knack for writing. So I went to CMU and worked for the school paper and uh, have a degree in journalism and Worked um, probably 15, 20 years in, as a sports editor and uh, really enjoyed it. Do you do any of it today? Yes, I write a column for the Review Magazine. I have a, um article come out in Michigan History Magazine on a, a local athlete, Dick Reifenberg. And I've had uh, a number of articles in the past in Michigan history. Uh, I like the history aspect, digging up information on these individuals. So. And you, for many years, 19, I think, were involved in the Sports Hall of Fame before you moved on and let others uh, take the reins. But that's, I mean, that was you, wasn't it? I mean, the Sports Hall of Fame, you were responsible in many ways for that. Yeah, I um, I, I wrote a book, uh, The History of Sports in Saginaw County, uh, Glory it was the name of it. Um, it's out of print now. You can't, the only place you can get it are the libraries in Saginaw. Um, that was how the Hall of Fame began because that book came out 440 pages of the best athletes in Saginaw County from 1894. Did three and a half years of research at White Library and uh, that spelled out all the great athletes and uh, when that came out we got a 
a grassroots committee together, and uh, you talk about throwing a hat. Everybody threw fifty bucks in a hat, and literally, <laughs> literally started and, it, and it really took off. Yeah, uh, very first banquet we had seven hundred people, and you were involved in getting it into the Castle Museum. Yes, um, I was the one writing all the grants. The Castle Museum said, "Hey, you, there's a a wing that's yep. underutilized. It's a storage area. If you guys want that uh, for a dollar a year." Uh, but we had um, we had to renovate that area, and uh, we got the blueprints out. And uh, you know there was a wall, and said there was a pipe behind that wall. So we take that wall down. There was no pipe, and then there would be a pipe behind a different wall. And so it was a real guessing game. It's an old building. <laughs> it's an old building. I marvel at that building. I went there with my mother as a kid to get our mail when it was a post office and wow. I just marveled at the the floors and the high ceilings and the marble and it, it very very neat place I've spent a lot of hours in I know you're you're not involved now but I mean I could, if there were more room I could see that expanding because it really is a neat display they have so much memorabilia um, from all the athletes that uh, have gone into the Hall of Fame that they rotate it every year does the museum store that for you and take care of that for you or the, uh, Jeff Cottrell, who's a curator from right. uh, uh, for the Hall of Fame, works at the Cass Museum and has it all stored. So and he has it all stores. Yeah. And uh, there's some neat stuff. And there's some stuff in my collection, my personal collection over there. Um, got an old uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon beer uh, sign with uh, Kid Levine, world champion boxer from 1890, mm -hmm. who uh, was from Zawaki, ironically. This, this region, and particularly in, in Saginaw and the environs around it, has produced a lot of great athletes, hasn't it? There have been some tremendous athletes that have gone uh, gone on to college and to the professional ranks. And, uh, boy, this spring, um, I know you were there, the, the final Arthur Hill Saginaw High basketball game yep. at the Dow Event Center. They Another. asked me, Dr. Roberts asked me, can you introduce these gentlemen at halftime yeah and uh and i'm looking out there the you know the jason richardson's the lamar woodley's and the cliff ryan's of the world and i'm thinking how many millions of dollars are on that floor well all these athletes male and female were out there and that's something that's never going to happen again on one floor so people were taking pictures they wanted pictures of their friends even though they were competitors they're all friends. They all well, know they're each all other. friends from Saginaw because yes. they knew each other from this it, area. Exactly. You know, they all went their separate ways. When you get on a team, you know, you exactly. become a member of that team. But they all grew up together. Yep. Many of them probably played together. Yep. And and a uh, number of them are my friends. Uh, Ron Stanley's in the in oh the yeah. 40 well, club of course he's in Fortney yes. Club with us. Yep. And just a tremendous individual. And what did Ron do? I forgot now. Ron uh, went to Saginaw High. Uh, was a two-time captain at Michigan State and. The first player from Saginaw to have a Super Bowl ring. That's that's with, with what the it was. Steelers. Yeah, that's right. He was and, with the Steelers, and he he won't bring it out. You got to beg him because he's one of those yep. individuals. <laughs> he's just quiet, reserved. Uh, but boy, uh, when he put the uh, the shoulder pads on, look out! And not only that, uh, he went into education. Yes, he's an administrator now. Yep, uh, he was he, teaching, and now he's an administrator. Yep, East Lansing High School. Yep, I mean, you know, he's he's. The stories are endless about these people, aren't they? Yes, and which um, is why you keep writing. <laughs> I do. I do a, a deal at the uh, um, at the Cass Museum for the Leadership Saginaw uh, Chamber of Commerce Leadership yeah. Saginaw History Program every year. I do a bit on uh, sports history, and uh, there's so many stories of each yep. individual that are, are just tremendous. I'll tell you what, folks. If you have any. Uh, questions about the sports history in Saginaw, any individuals who participated, you can give us a call. Chat with Jack Taney. He is a sports historian extraordinaire and been involved in it all his life. 989-752-6111. 989-752-6111. And we will take a break and come back with more. Sure, you've got a Detroit line. All right, we're back with you here on the Art Lewis Show talking to Jack Taney, a sportsman extraordinaire in the Great Lakes Bay region, involved in sports all his life. And we have a caller. Let's talk to Mike in Thomas Township. Mike, you're on with Jack Taney. Good morning. 
Uh, good morning, Jack. Good morning, Art. Um, I got a couple questions for Jack. Um, do you know of a, a boxer, Kid Shinsky? Kashinsky, that's uh, Kashinsky's a that's a Shinsky. Oh, Shinsky. No, Shin, S H I N S K I. Uh, I do not. There's been a lot of great boxers from back in the 40s and 50s. I know, uh, researched quite a few of them. I, that name has not uh, popped up. I think he fought in the mid 40s, if I remember right. Um, and he had to shorten his name because it wouldn't fit on the, on the playbill. So they, <laughs> it was Slusinski, and they shortened it. And then, how about Bob Rapley? Yes. He's a pitcher from Holy Rosary. Yes, and uh, I know Steve Rapley uh, very well. I went to high school with. And oh. uh, that's not a common name, so uh, I know they're no. related. <laughs> but uh, Bob, uh, he, I forgot how many no-hitters he threw in a, in a row. Uh, this is back in the 50s, when, and I went to a Catholic school, so they didn't really keep good records, and they never publicized it. But I think he pitched four or five no-hitters in a row. Because uh, I know they didn't play a heck of a lot of games during the season back then. No, I don't even know. I never played baseball. I always worked during the, that time, but I played football and basketball. And then uh, I noticed that they have the, the Holy Rosary's uh, letter up there, but it's blue and white, and it was always blue and gray up through the, fifth, you know, 58 when I graduated. Uh, so the colors, and as a matter of fact, I think I gave you a uh, letter, you know, a blue and gray letter. Because I just, I, I don't know when they changed it, never heard of it. <laughs> but it was blue and white, the one that you got in there. Yeah, that was a heck of a project, getting a, a varsity letter from every school in Saginaw County. Because for all the schools that have closed and merged, like 37 oh, high schools. Oh, yeah. And some of them oh, have yeah. been closed for about 50 years. Wow. So. Oh, yeah, golly. We played schools from Owasso, from Mount Pleasant in football, uh, 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 Bay City, Flint, you know, all over the place because they didn't have that. I mean, it was Class D. And we had to play a lot of Class C schools, too, and uh, because we just, you know, they have a roster. But it was interesting. But I love football. I mean, it was fun back then. All right. <laughs> okay. Great, Mike. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Talk to you later. Yep, bye-bye. Bye. If you have any uh, sports questions for Jack, 989-752-6111. If... If I said to you, Jack, one sport, one sport only you could play, what would it be? Yeah, regardless of talent, let's say you had talent for whatever you wanted to do, what sport would it be? Uh, I, I love the sport of baseball. Yeah. Um, the inner workings, the the strategy behind it. Uh, boy, A.J. Hinch has shown us now everybody on that team is contributing, and he's pulling the right punches, uh, pinch hitting, pinch running, uh, relief pitching. Um, I do a lot of umpiring, so I, I'm around the game a lot. My son, Joe, played college baseball and did well at a high level. Yeah. And uh, really enjoy the game of baseball. So let me ask you this, Jack. Given baseball today, with the electronics between the catcher and the pitcher and all the iPads and the dugouts, <laughs> has it changed the game for the better or not? And the pitch And the clock? Not a big fan of the clock. Not a big fan of the uh, communication between the catcher and the pitcher. I like. I'm old school. Me too. Um, you know, I'm a. I'm it's a, a game sh- of humans. Yeah, I'm a, a, you know they're the experimenting in AAA with a robotic umpire, and it's not working out very well. Good. They even know that, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know you can't take the human element out of it. Um, you know, I watched the game yesterday, the Tiger game yesterday, and. Uh, the uh, home plate umpire had bad calls for both teams. Well, um, but that's you know that's the thing. If if an umpire's strike zone, let's say, is uh, generous, as long as it's generous for both teams, then you know what you're playing against. If an umpire is inconsistent, that's a whole other story. Exactly. Yep, he sets the tone, and the, then you're playing against the umpire, and that's not the game. Yep. Uh, you know, he sets the tone in the first inning, and they find out where the strike zone is. So maybe not first time through the order, those they're learning the the strike zone of that umpire who they get rotated every game, and uh, so. So you're an umpire. You call a tight zone or a loose zone? Um, tight. You're not you're not there to watch watch kids walk. No, that's you you want them to swing the bat. Yeah. So that's how they learn the game too. Exactly. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, if you're calling in, let it ring. We'll get you answered here in just a minute or two. And uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take a break and get those calls set up, and then we'll come back and talk to them. Uh, let me chat with you for a minute about uh, my car dealer, McDonald Ford, and Quick Lane Freeland right next to McDonald Ford. Quick Lane Freeland is where you go for all of your routine maintenance for any make and model car. Whatever it is, they'll keep your car and truck in tip-top shape. And further, they have a product called Fridgy Fresh. Fridgy Fresh is a hospital disinfectant placed in your air conditioning system. It kills germs, mildew, odors, mold. Uh, it keeps you healthy and safe in your car's cabin. Best of all, it's only 20 bucks. takes 10 minutes, no appointment necessary. Stop into Quick Lane Freeland, say you'd like Fridgy Fresh. Quick Lane Freeland next to McDonald Ford, servicing all makes and models of cars and trucks. The old saying, the bitterness of pork. about sports in the Saginaw area and callers waiting. We have Manny in Carlton. Manny, Manny, you are on hey, hey. With, uh, with Jack. Good morning. Jack, my friend. Hey, Manny, how are you doing? Good, sir. How are you doing, Jack? Good. Um, hey, Art. Um, I just want to tell you a quick story how good of a guy Jack is. Um, it was after work. I was at a local watering hole. I was talking to a, a young coach over in Carlton, and he was telling me how they're struggling. They don't have enough mitts or balls. And the right handed kids are trying to, or the left handed kids are trying to use right mitts and so on. And they're trying to get through it. And, um, I already had Jack in mind, but then guess who walks in? Jack. I introduce them <laughs> together. I introduce them. They shake hands. Jack says, hey, are you going to be here for a while? He goes, yeah, I'll be here. And Jack says, all right, hang tight. Jack goes home, comes back with a trunk full of mitts and balls and bats. And it was so heart-touching because this coach was struggling. And Jack just knocked it out of the park, literally, right there for all those kids. So I thought I'd call in and just let you know how God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> you Jack, just happen to walk in on that, huh? Exactly. <laughs> you remember that? You remember that Jack, that cot, that young coach? He started tearing up. I was tearing up. It was like, yep, man, yep. I had, a, I, w I ran, I, r I sprinted home and brought back all this equipment, and he was just tickled. That's so. cool. Every, everything catcher's mitt, left mitt, left handed, left handed mitt, catcher's gloves. <laughs> Yeah, the kids were forced to try to use right-handed because they couldn't afford lefties. Yep, so, yep. so very I just good. Want to let you know, good story, Manny. And, uh, yeah, hey, Jack's a one in a million. We're glad to have him here in uh, in our area. Our, I agree. That's self -defense. I agree. All right, all right, Manny. All right, take care. All right, bye bye Thanks. now. Talk to you later, Jack. Yep. Bye. And we have with us Gloria in Saginaw. Gloria, good morning. Hi, Art. I have an answer to Mike's questions. That was my dad. His name was Leonard Slisinski. Uh Jim Cuthbertson wrote a book on the fighters, and my dad is listed on page 145. His name was too long to put on the ticket promotion, so they changed it. <laughs> S-E-N-S-K-I. And according to the article that Mr. Cuthbertson wrote, Jack, Jack Dembski wrote one of my dad's or refereed one of my dad's fights he was a um, golden gloves boxer and then he met our mother and that was the end of his career his, <laughs> smart man his, uh, con his contract is in there and he made 15 dollars oh wow. and then he became a Saginaw fire department but according to holy rosary yes they did change the colors in i think it was 1961 and it was too hard to find the uh, colors at that time blue and gray so they did it blue and white hmm. good so, stories yeah so he's in that book that john cusperson wrote it's come called coming down coming to scratch for the down or down for the count and he has a whole list of um fighters from the area well from Saginaw and grand rapids and so on fantastic thanks gloria so for well, for Christmas one year, my dad and mother bought my two sisters and myself boxing gloves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you ever oh, use them? <laughs> definitely. definitely. <laughs> so, but my dad, um, then he became a Sagna fireman, and that was, mm -hmm. was the most important job he ever had in his life, plus uh, being our dad. Yeah, very good. Well, Gloria, so, thanks for so the memories. Mike, 
and Mike was right. He was. They did shorten his name. Yeah. Thanks for the memories. Right, we appreciate thanks. it. Yep. All righty. I appreciate it. Bye bye. Goodbye. There are a lot of those stories in Saginaw, aren't there? There's uh, a lot of stories like that. You keep finding new ones all the time. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know what? Um, I keep mentioning Zawaki, but uh, lucky to grow up in a small city like that. Mentioned Kid Levine, the the world champion boxer, but mm-hmm. Al Luplo. Uh, oh yes, yeah, another name. Three right. three sport athlete at uh, St Andrews went on to Michigan State and then played for the the Indians, Mets, and Pirates. Um, knew Al well, and I knew his family. Uh, got uh, got to golf with him, and he was a tremendous left handed golfer. Um, he was telling me a story about um, a pitcher who we were talking about superstitions in baseball. He said the, there was a pitcher, Al Jackson, that was um, uh, on a streak, a winning streak, and he was rooming with him. And he says, back then when we were on the road, we just wore our uniforms. We just grabbed a cab and went back to the hotel. He says he would not wash his uniform. He just took it off, threw it in a corner of the hotel room, and he says, is all you could see were flies buzzing around it because it smelled so bad. <laughs> Next day he would put the uniform on and they would take a cab uh, to the ballpark. Oh, wow. Those were the days. Huh? Yes. <laughs> you know, I was going to ask you, and I know you're from New York, are, are you a Yankees fan? I was a Yankee fan until George Steinbrenner bought the team. <laughs> Literally. I mean, you know, in the old days, yeah. I grew up, uh, I, I had the privilege of very, very young age of seeing DiMaggio play once. But uh, I, uh, I lived in the Bronx. I was a Yankee fan. My buddies and I knew how to sneak into the Yankee Stadium. Hmm. I, I think the, uh, you know, the, the length of time it's been, nobody's going to come after me. But we, <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, we knew that where the, where the pockets of insecurity were and uh, how to get in. Uh, those were the days. I mean, my dad uh, would take me to baseball games. We, we went to the Dodgers once out at the old Ebbets Field. Yankee Stadium many, many times. And we went to the Polo Grounds where the Giants played because that was just across the river from Yankee Stadium. And there was a subway shuttle that went from one to the other. And so we, we sometimes took in two games. If there was a day and a oh. night game, we could, <laughs> we could do the Yankees and do the Dodgers, do the uh, Giants in the same, uh, same span of time. Those were the days. But the, my favorite sports story, and I've told this many times, uh, my dad liked hockey. And now back in the day, there were only six teams, the original six in the National Hockey League. And we would go down to the old Madison Square Garden, and New York Rangers were playing. But the only team I ever saw other than the Rangers was this team in red, <laughs> the Detroit Red Wings. And I, so I asked my dad, I said, when did the other teams come to town? He says, I don't know. I said, what do you mean you don't know? He wasn't a Rangers fan. He was a Red Wings fan. We didn't go to see the Rangers. We went to see the Red Wings. <laughs> so I saw some of the greats, some of the old greats that played in the Red Wings, oh, you know, in the late 40s, early 50s. And it was, you know, to show you how times have changed, when you went to a hockey game in New York City, the women had on their furs, they were in their finery, the men's were all in suits Suits and ties and hats. Yeah, I mean, that was, you looked around and you look today, it's not what you see today, you know. So times have have really changed in that. Uh, I remember remember when people used to travel that way, too. I mean, airplanes, airplanes, trains, you know, you got dressed up. It was an occasion. Not so anymore. <laughs> yep. So, so you remember Ron Lee, the former Saginaw yep, Township manager? Absolutely, sure. And grew Ron up, well. He's a friend and um, grew up in uh, Brooklyn. Yep. And his brother was a bat boy for the Brooklyn Dodgers. So Ron got to go to all these Brooklyn Dodgers games. And uh, I asked him one time. I said, "Did you know how good you had it?" He says, "I thought that was just normal." Well, yeah. That's uh, well. That's the thing about. And people have to understand, growing up in New York City is a way of life. And for us, it was normal because that's what you did in the city, you know. And, and uh, you know, hopping on the subway on a, on a Saturday with your buddies, that was normal life. Mm-hmm. That was what you did in the city. 
people who didn't grow up in that atmosphere look at it and say, wow, how blessed you were, how lucky you were. We didn't look at it that way. Right. It's just what we did. Right. You know, and, and the other side of that is what you didn't do. For example, I grew up in New York City. In all the 32 years in and around New York, except for college, never once went to the Statue of Liberty. Huh. Because, hey, it's out there. It'll be there tomorrow, you know? <laughs> when we came here in, uh, in 94, when my late wife and I formed a tour business, two years later, we took a tour to New York City. That was the first time I was ever on the Statue of wow. Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you grow up in some things you take for granted. Yes. And a show like this points out, don't take things for granted. There's a lot of greatness around you, you know. All right, hang on. We'll come back. And, Dan, hang on. We'll get to you when we return. We need talking about sports in our region, and Dan is in Saginaw. Dan, you are on with Jack Taney. Uh, good morning, guys. Morning. Uh, I was talking about a team, basically, uh, going back about 30 years ago. They come from the small town of Merrill, basketball team. And they went to the finals, but lost. That's when the, the Smiters were playing. Yep, they had a set they of twins on that team. Set of twins, and they actually took out the teams before that. That, that they took out were uh, Damper and Meridian, which had a really good team in the area. They also took out Muskegon Heights, which came from a B to a C school for some reason. They came to, down like two students. And uh, they were a powerhouse in the Skeek and Grand Rapids area every year, playing a lot of A schools. They got three uh, all state players. Uh, they beat that team actually quite easily. And uh, then they took out a team from Detroit. Uh, I think it might have been the Poors. And uh, then they lost in the, in the finals to, Saint, to Nagani which uh, I think they were overconfident. So what do you know about that team? That um, I remember one of the DeSmiters got in foul trouble in that championship game. And yes, um, he did. so he had, you know, riding a pine while, uh, while his brother and his teammates are out there uh, doing battle. But uh, these two guys, if you've ever seen them play, were like jumping jacks. They were each six foot four. Uh, they were jumped as high as anybody in the area, including whether you were white or black. And uh, they actually were all playing these guys. They had three all-state guys on their team. They weren't all first team, but one was like I think first, third, and fourth team in the Detroit paper that year. And uh, they're prominent you know, mostly black school, and uh, they won that game kind of easily. So I just want to know if anything has been concerned about uh, um, with uh, suggesting that they're in the Hall of Fame. Yep, uh, they have to be nominated, and uh, I don't believe nobody has uh, nominated them as of yet. But, uh, yeah, a lot of Saginaw County people were uh, were pulling for Merrill because it was like a Hoosiers story, small you know, school on small the west side. But powerful. Yeah. Yep, on the west side of Saginaw County, and uh, just a small school, and beating bigger, bigger schools, and uh, um, and they did. They did have one heck of a team that year. All right, Dan, we got to run for time, but we appreciate the call. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. So we got just a, a minute left here, Jack. We got to do this again. This is fun. There's, yeah, there's a lot left on the table yet. I mean, <laughs> sports is huge around here. Yep, I you know I sit on SVSU's Sports Hall of Fame committee uh, since day one. I think they're in their eighth year now. We just had our banquet uh, last Friday, and uh, I'm on a Hawkins committee. The yeah that awards the Saginaw Club that's, that's coming the, up. Yeah, it, um, December fifth, I believe, mm-hmm, is right. there. Uh, that thing has really taken off. Um, the top senior high school football player in Saginaw County. And uh, um, they get awarded at the every. There's three uh, finalists, and they all get scholarship mm-hmm. money. And uh, it's really, really taken off. Uh, it's at the Saginaw Club, and um, so uh, it's the Harry Hawkins Award is history in itself. Oh yeah, there's so much history around here. Promise, we'll do this again.
Sounds good. I appreciate the time. Jack Taney, we thank him for being with us today. We'll take a break and come back and tell you what's ahead next hour. I have with me Jeff Carrick from Ed- being with us today and talking sports, and we are going to do it again in the near future. Coming up at 10 o'clock this morning after the news, we're going to learn about the Can Council and things going on there. All of that coming up following the news from CBS, which is the national and local news. And Michael Purchase in the WSGW newsroom. He's going to bring you up a date on the region and the state. That is what is ahead this morning. And then we will be back to chat with you right after all of that. I'm Art Lewis. Stick around. Thanks for being with us this morning. Broadcasting from the 